Hello, this is Chess with Bill. Uh, so today, we're going to go over the Carl's Bremen system of the English. The English is my favorite opening with white. Uh, why? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe because it's the Sicilian just for white. And for some reason, I like the Sicilian. Uh, I don't know. But <clears throat> in my latest games, I saw that chess.com was like, meh, Carl's Bremen system. And I was like, what? What's a Carl's Bremen? So we're going to do some Carl's Bremen stuff. Let me move my my stuff out of the way. Uh, do all this number. Look how little that, that guy is right now. Oof. Oof. Right. All right. <clears throat> As my computer labors. We're going to go over this together. Uh, I, I don't know it. This is the first time that I've uh, messed around with Lee Chess. And, uh, yeah. I guess I can give some credence to who this, who's this is. If you go to Lee Chess, you go to Learn and type in Carl's Bremen, you'll find, I want to say this is the second one. Um, and I don't know if it actually tells me who wrote this. Let's see. Eh? It's SF16NNUE. Is that the person? Let me see if I can find him. Liam Chez. So I assume that is the person who created this, just to give him some credit. And the English is uh, C3, or C4, I mean. And then next you come out this way. And usually, I fianchetto. Uh, my big question has been, do I put the knight on F3 first, or do I fianchetto over here <clears throat> first? And then, of course, you go for these attacks. We're going to find out. So, let me... Uh, Yeah, we'll have this guy up. What's better for you all? We'll take it like this. Okay. So, uh, the start is reverse Sicilian. Uh, this is called the two knights variation, from what I understand. And then do the old G3 Fianchetto. And then they are going to push D5, <clears throat> which I believe you take after that. All right, so this is the Carl's Bremen reversed dragon. So I've kind of got the dragon going on over here. Um, yeah. Uh, this move moves into the Carl's Bremen system. The main goal is to, con is to gain control of a very powerful square of d5. Okay, so I'm assuming I probably take, right? Let's do that again. Boom, boom, boom. Right? People don't always do this. Sometimes they come out uh, with a knight. Sometimes they push this pawn. Um, sometimes they come out here, I've noticed. I take, <clears throat> takes with the knight, and then I feed Keta. Probably knight after this, yeah. And then you get this double knights here. I don't think I've seen this too often. Castles, and then the bishop comes there. Because once I'm castled, this kind of loses its sting, right? Because it's not x-raying the king. All right, let's look at that again. <clears throat> Just the move order. And this is the Carl's Bremen system. Uh, assuming they go d5, take it, um, which is our goal, according to this. Interesting. Here, white comes to a number of choices. Okay, that's after the end. He's going to get away from that attack. I'm going to develop. He's developing. And we're ready to castle. The engine apparently says uh, a three for white. So here, preventing something like that, maybe. Um, D3. OK, it opens up the, the bishop, the dark squared bishop, and prevents an attack here. Um, this would lose because you've got one, two, three to my one, two. 
My one and my two. And then the other one is b3. So you kind of open up the bishop this way, I guess. Or just protect uh, this diagonal. Huh. And I suppose you, you're... Well, b3 protects this square and that square. Okay. <clears throat> this looks like a big old game. Let's find out what's going on. Right? Same stuff. Two knights variation. Hmm. Takes, takes. Go through the whole blah, blah, blah. And on this one, they chose to go A3. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is a, uh, a bad, a bad, bad move. Okay, now D3. So in a, in a weird way, weird way? In a way. Hmm. I mean, it's a lot like the Sicilian, right? I've got a few avenues of attack. You know, the queen can come out. This sort of thing. Bishop is open. I'm assuming going to push here, maybe? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so the rooks. Okay, wow. So I was completely wrong. This is not a bad bet. I was thinking that maybe there's some sort of sacrifice that can happen. Getting the rook out of the way. And so this becomes important. Now, what I find interesting, initially, it was all about protecting or gaining control of the d5 square. But I don't really have control of the d5 square right now, right? Okay, rook is protecting this pawn for a push here, maybe. And then this pawn is protected this way. Right, so they're attacking that way. Gets the knight where I want him, I suppose. There's the e-push. Um, my guess is he could retreat or he takes. So he takes. I take back. Gain space, which I can't take because of this guy and this guy. So they suddenly become useful. My bishop can't really move because of this. This has been a, a big question for me as well. Uh, when using the English, where to put the queen at this point in the game? Although I don't think I've ever played like this. Usually we have some catastrophe going on in the center. Pew, 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 pew. No? Sorry. Um, so it doesn't make sense to move the queen this way, I suppose. Interesting putting her there. I guess you don't want to put her here because... At some point, the knight could come down. Just as a guess, you wouldn't want to do that. Maybe here. I don't know. And then this is taken with tempo. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, putting her here, it removes this square for the knight. Um, does keep the bishop open and starts to try to connect the rooks and black isn't very uh, black doesn't have a whole lot of development going on I don't see I mean I guess he's got a lot of lines open hmm so he's going to move his bishop he's prepping for that and I'm going to attack that pawn. It's a sensible square. A sensible, sensible position. Um, because where else is the bishop going to go, right? Oh, is this a Magnus? Ah, I didn't know I could do that. Is this a Magnus game? Chapter 4, Magnus with A3. Hmm. All right, let's just keep on going through it. 
it's wild. So x-raying this pawn, protecting the queen. And finally, uh, the knight's kind of on a good square, and uh, a potential attack is revealed. Also, uh, this fork here, although it's forking the queen and the bishop, you know, do they want to take this bishop right now? I guess it's just prepping for it. Okay. So just poking around, getting the uh, the rooks, getting this rook over so that this is an unprotected pawn and uh, skewering this, this knight. That's sexy. Unskewered. Doesn't take the bait because, well, that would not work, would it? Queen is under attack. Why doesn't she take the pawn? Looks like a free pawn. Is that a poison pawn or something? 